there, this is Andy Davidson with Quiet Times for Kids and the creator of the Morning Time Plans for Cycle 3. Uh, I'm going to do a series of videos and this is the first of a four point part series to help you have a successful morning time with your kiddos. The first that I'm going to be talking about today is my top five tips to having a successful morning time. Um, the next one will be, it's all about habits and it'll be about starting with habits for mama and then also habit training for your kids. This third and fourth video are going to be called Tough Love for Littles and Tough Love for Middles about discipline and the habit of discipline in morning time. So let's get started with my five top tips for morning time. The first tip I want to give you is assigned seating. Um, I really encourage you to assign your kids to where you want them to sit. I don't just let them kind of sit anywhere. I take my olders and I put them each on a couch and then I take my three youngers and I give them a spot on the floor near me. And I think that creates a lot more expectation for them of where you want them to stay, what space you want them to stay in. I know moms that maybe use a carpet square or even a hula hoop on the carpet to have their children stay in assigned seats and it just helps them not to have so many interactions with one another, touching or um, conflicts that way. So I encourage you to consider assigned seating for morning time. The second tip is um, maps and dry erase markers. So I have a collection of these maps and they're just the cheap little Walmart maps um, that I believe are place map maps. But often my kids enjoy taking a dry erase marker and just tracing all the states while I'm talking. Sometimes I even take a large map like this and lay it in the middle of the floor and then each of the kids sits around the map and they just trace a different continent. So it gives them something to do to keep their hands busy. I also have a map, um, this is a continent map that I created these little removable laminated shapes for the continents and sometimes my littles enjoy playing with that as well and can even trace around the laminated paper. So there's my second tip. My third tip is snacks. Um, in my morning basket, I have this little um, thing, and it's just full of lifesavers, peppermint lifesavers. Every once in a while, I have fruit by the foot in here too, but when things start to fade or when they're struggling, sometimes even just giving them a little sugar-free mint or a fruit by the foot or something can help keep everybody a little bit more busy. And still, I don't do it every morning, but I do do that sometimes. So that's the third tip. The fourth tip is coloring books. We have a kind of a basket of some of those adult coloring books with the really specific things, some of the little ones, and I don't do that every time, but I just know that my coloring basket is available, that sometimes that seems to make morning time go some more smoothly. And then my fifth tip is busy bags. And some of you may have already heard of these before. You can just Google busy bags for preschoolers. And um, the original busy bags were these um, Ziploc gallon bags that you would create with different things that would keep a kid busy. In our family, I don't actually use the bags. We have kind of busy boxes, you could call them. And I have a shelf of these boxes over here, which are also kind of like Montessori activities. And so I might rotate through our boxes or through the busy bags and assign one per child. And so they know the expected area they're supposed to sit in and they have something to keep their hands busy during certain points of morning time. They don't do it constantly, but definitely during the read aloud or maybe we're reviewing grammar for the olders and so the littles aren't as engaged during that point. So um, that's when we use busy bags or busy boxes. So again, in summary, the five tips are assigned seating, um, maps with dry erase markers to give them just to color on those maps and it's super easy to erase it, but they get in the habit of tracing maps. Third was snacks and treats that I keep kind of a stock of. Fourth was the coloring books and five was um, kind of having a source of busy bags or busy boxes for your kiddos. So I hope this helps and we'll see you next time when we talk about habit training and morning time. Bye-bye.